in the Union Army, leaving Marmy to struggle with our upbringing alone and with little money. My oldest sister Meg longed to be a social butterfly, for which I hadn't a bit of sympathy. I, Josephine March, was determined to become a famous writer. Amy, my youngest sister, dreamt of greatness too, and even tried to invade my attic sanctuary with her paints and easel. Rebuffed, she took revenge by burning my only completed manuscript. Angered beyond good sense, I allowed Amy to skate on thin ice and she was nearly drowned. I swore then to learn to control my temper, but one lesson proved not to be enough. The boy across the way brightened our days. Like me, Laurie was full of mischief. And unfortunately, he and his grandfather could not see eye to eye on Laurie's future. Of us all, only our gentle Beth seemed truly happy. But Bethy fell ill with scarlet fever. And one terrible night, we thought we had lost her. All sorrow seemed over, though, when Father returned from the war. And then Meg had to go and get silly over John Brooke, Laurie's tutor. I blame rich old Aunt March's interference for this, and let her know it, too. So it was that Amy, not I, would get to go to Europe in the spring. Would I never learn to control this dreadful temper of mine? <laughs> It was spring of the year 1865. Usually a time of renewal, this spring promised few hopes for me. The war against the Confederacy seemed destined never to end, and the entire family appeared to be dissolving before my eyes. Talk of Meg's coming marriage to John Brooke and Amy's trip to Europe filled my ears, and only my good friend Laurie seemed not to change. We were all at Concord's Town Hall to hear the famous suffragette Susan B. Anthony. All that is, except Bethy. Her recovery from the scarlet fever remained painfully slow, and I sought solace in my writing, going out only when the insistence of others made it impossible to refuse. Wasn't she wonderful? We women must not return to our men the control over our lives which this dreadful war has forced upon us. Amy, you always get carried away with everything. But Meg, everything she said was right. The war's nearly over, and we must not lose our great strides forward. Well, I don't want to go to work in a shop, and neither do you. I, for one, am quite content to have my husband be both wage earner and decision maker in my home. I figure the lady spoke straight to your innermost soul. Oh, yes, a fine speaker. What is this? That's just something I, I found on the seat next uh, to me. Here's our carriage. Shall we? The New York Volcano wasn't the Saturday Evening Post, but it did publish works of fiction, and more importantly, invite submissions for which they were prepared to pay, commensurate with quality. I, therefore, redoubled my writing efforts to the exclusion of just about everything else, and everybody. story as usual well come on let's go <sighs> springs here it's about time you noticed you've been buried the winter long in that garret of yours. <laughs> Not buried, Laurie. Nobody can be buried three stories up. <laughs> Interred, maybe. I'll have you a race, Laurie. Down to the big oak. You're on. We'll start from our stable.
<laughs> I demand a rematch on the way back. Face it, Joe, you were outridden by an expert. What? Good luck, that's all. Just pure dumb luck. It's beautiful. Let's climb it. Joe? I wanna... I need to talk to you, Joe, seriously. Talk on, then. Oh. If this Wagner could speak... Imagine the tales it could tell. Joe? Oh. Joe, no, don't, please don't, Joe. I love you, Joe. I want you to marry me. Oh, Laurie. In June, I'll see the end of Cambridge and the school. We can see the world like we've always dreamed, but together. And you can, you can write to your heart's content, and I'll, I'll have my music. Oh, Joe, can't you love me just a little? But I do, Laurie. Just... not like that. Oh, it's not fair. Everything's ruined. Meg had to go and get Mooney over John. And Amy's off to Europe. Now you! Why do you have to change, too? You can't fight growing up forever, Joe. You'll change just like everybody else. I don't know if I could ever feel the way you and Meg do. I'm far too selfish. No, stop. Don't talk like an idiot. You'll love somebody someday. Just not me, that's all. Maybe. Maybe, but when I do... It will have to be a thing... to shake the heart. To live and die for. Oh, Laurie. It couldn't ever work out for us, don't you see that? You want a pretty girl who's accomplished and, and you'd soon tire of my scribbling, Laurie. We'd end up fighting like cats and dogs. You'll find another girl. And it won't be for friendship, but... Stop it! Don't patronize me, Joe. You really don't know what I feel, do you? You said it, a thing to shake the heart, but you don't know it. Only I do, Joe. I do. got back safely. He did, didn't he? His horse didn't throw him or anything. No, Laurie's all right, but I don't like the way he treated his animal. He doesn't deserve horses behaving that way. Don't blame him too much or, or lecture him either. Not right now. We had a fight, Mr. Lawrence. No, not so much a fight as, as a parting of the ways, I'm afraid. Oh, Joe. Would you like to tell me about it, my dear? Laurie, he wants me to love him, and I can't. 
Are you quite sure, Joe? It would be so perfect, you and Theodore. I've lost my best friend, Mr. Lawrence. Oh, no, my girl. No, you'll be friends again in time. In time. Thank you. to tell me to stop playing again, Grandfather? No, my boy, no. But you are being a trifle hard on the instrument, don't you agree? I've just spoken with Joe, she told me. Needless to say, I, I'm disappointed. As usual, and your grandson. No, Theodore. It is not so. Oh, it took a bit of doing. No one can deny that both on your part and mine. You've performed close to brilliantly this last year in college, finished in such short order and with honors. I'm very proud of you. I promised you for years that after college, you could be your own man for a while. Why don't you travel, see the world the way you've always wanted? Not now, Grandfather. It just doesn't interest me. Not alone. Well, it needn't be alone. There's someone who would be delighted to accompany you. What do you say to uh, London in June? London in June. Mm -hmm. I hope you won't feel you're wearing a hand-me-down, darling. Oh, Marmy, it's beautiful. With a few alterations, it'll fit perfectly. And it was yours. Of course I want to wear it. Let me show you the beautiful fruit trees that we have back here. And I, that's why I want to have one. What kind of fruit is it? it be just... Oh, what I'm kind of fruit? <laughs> Oh, Joe, be happy for me, please. But I am, Meg. Truly. Don't mind me. You know how moody I get sometimes? Regular old bear. Not only a grump, but selfish, too. Truth to tell, I just hate losing you, Meg. Oh, but you won't be, Joe. Wait. In two weeks, you'll have not only me, but a brother at last. You said you've always I've wanted one. I've to do putting this kitchen to rights. Meg, dear, if you don't go out and oversee your meddling little sister, it's going to be Amy's kitchen. Not yours at all. Amy, what I couldn't are you help doing? it over here, Joe. You'll love it this way, Meg. Now, you decide what I'll do. Meg, look what I found out here in the back garden. Amy, you come too. I don't mean to be a... It's not that I'm jealous, Marmy. Really, I'm not. I know Meg is happy, and I wouldn't begrudge her that for the world. Of course not, dear. But perhaps you're not quite ready yet for all that's happening in our lives right now. So many changes. But I'd best get ready, hadn't I? Because it is all happening. I think... I've been thinking for some while now. I want to go away, Mother. Everyone seems to be striking out on new paths but me. Amy will be leaving for Europe soon. And Laurie, Meg has John, but I... Joe. Oh, Marmy, it's all right. Well, it's just... It's the way it is. You know your friend, Mrs. Kierka? Didn't one of her letters say something about she hadn't been able to find the right governess? That's so far away, Joe. But if things must change, and it seems that they do, like it or not, well, 
One might as well go the whole hog. Do you want me to write to her for you? No. I'll write her myself today. And next summer, if I am able to save my money, I can take Bethy to the seashore. For as much as John and Margaret have consented together in holy wedlock and witnessed the same before God and this company, I pronounce them to be man and wife. Those whom God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. I'll kiss her, John, or I will. <laughs> I'd uh, like to propose a toast. Oh. Attention, everyone, please. Important announcement here. Thank you. For the beautiful bride and the handsome groom, I wish... Seems all of Concord wants to join our celebration. <laughs> oh, it's very nice. <laughs> oh, B, what is it? Boy, what is it? The war is over, ma'am. Lee surrendered to Daphnatics. the Union. May God preserve it forever. Amen. And keep it forever peaceful. <laughs> <laughs> it seems that my good advice is never needed in this family, but I am not meager-hearted as all well know. Therefore, Margaret, I have decided that the most generous gift I can present is to inform you that I've decided not to cut you out of my will after all. Oh, I have March. Bless you, dear child. Bless you. Champagne, Miss March? Such magnanimity deserves it. Uh, well, perhaps it does, young man, as you say. In any case, I'm told it helps to thin the blood for summer. <laughs> <laughs> It was a pretty ceremony, wasn't it? Yes. I don't know how I shall get along without you in Europe or anywhere. Maybe in time, Laurie, we'll be friends again. You'll be off to London soon. But I'm beating you to it. I go off tomorrow. I've taken a position as governess. I'm going to New York. To seek my fortune. Truly, dear, but they're usually like this. 
something always comes up, don't you know? I'll just take you straight up to your room. It's at the top of the house, just under the roof, as an artist studio should be. I know from your mother's letters that you're something of a writer. And surroundings count, I'm sure they do. Uh, we have a full guest list right now. Oh, thank heavens, 14 rooms fully occupied. But don't let that put you off. You'll make friends very quickly. We all sup together. Kitty little Mim, my babies. Though they're not babies any longer, more's the pity. They're the only children that live here, of course. But Professor Bear's little nephews come in for lessons, as do his other pupils so there are lots of young people in and out all the time anyway I've sent my two small ones off for a walk with the girl in that way I thought it would give you the afternoon to rest and unpack oh well if I'm free I, I don't want to rest Mrs. I Kierka? yes coming you go on up dear it's the only door at the top of the last flight oh so many guests so many details now I'm coming don't you lift that all by yourself I'll be right there <laughs> Are you laughing at the bear? Ah. Oh. Ah. 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 Go play with Sir Abbott. Oh, is that just too heavy for you? Is that heavy? <laughs> you are Miss Mars, the new governess, yeah? Yes. Yes, I am. <gasps> oh. Welcome, Miss Mars. To your new home. Oh, how marvelous. It's good, yeah? Oh, yes. Yes, it, it is. It's also a long way down. <laughs> I, yes. Oh. Oh. I see you found it. Yes, and it's much more than I ever... And found, too. The kindest man in New York, I do declare. And I warrant you haven't introduced yourself, either. Joe, I would like you to know, Herr Professor Friedrich Baer. Professor, this is my dear friend's daughter, Miss Josephine March. She's from Concord. That's a Massachusetts, you know. Oh, Joe, did you like the view? Isn't it simply beautiful? Oh, those two Hellions. Uncle Fred! Nephews to me, Miss Marsh. They will have my rooms in a ruin without me. Uncle Fred! Oh. Where are you? Uncle Fred! Oh, do come see the view, dear. One can see from Union Square clear to the Jersey Palisades out of that window. Yes, I saw it. It is Sweet beautiful. Sweet lamb, the professor. He's poor as a church mouse, you know. You can make a fire any time that you like. There's plenty of coal in the basement. He held a high faculty chair at the university in Berlin, but over here has yet to receive a like appointment anywhere. His sister lives in New York, too. She married an American, but the dear professor is much too proud to accept the charity of their home and stays with me. <sighs> it's a great shame. Such a brilliant man reduced to tutoring children. But I told you that, didn't I? Oh, and he does it with amazing goodwill and patience. <laughs> oh, supper's at 5.30. Oh, no, Mrs. Kirka. Uh, I was wondering if my afternoon is free. Could you tell me how to get to East 14th Street? Why, yes, dear. As you leave the house, you turn right. You go for several blocks and you run right into it. Oh. This area is quite safe. Thank you. You're part of this house now, Joe. We hope you'll be very happy here. Oh, I'm sure I... Oh, I'm sure I will. Oh. <sighs> Twenty-two East Fourteenth Street. Twenty-two East Fourteenth Street. 
Turkeys. It's what you want, isn't it? So go try then. Oh no, no, no! I don't call this a story. This, this, this is Pilar. You know, you've got your goal to submit me something like that. Now you get out of here, and you don't come back until you learn how to write. I deal with professionals, not amateurs. Oh, you're lost, ma'am, miss. No. No, I'm. I'm. I'm looking for Mr. Dashwood. I have some stories for him, for you to read. They're written by a friend, and he's not an amateur. They're too long. Oh, I'll be perfectly... My friend will be willing to shorten yeah, them. There's too much moralizing altogether. But I thought... My friend took such care that the sinner should repent at the end. A story should teach a lesson, shouldn't it? Not to our readers. They want to be entertained, not preached at. Morals, they don't sell nowadays, miss. Oh, but it seems to I me... You just leave them with me and we'll make the changes. And uh, pay you... Uh, pay your friend, that is, uh, $25. <laughs> On publication, of course. Yes, of course. <laughs> On publication. Yeah, I'm going to need your your friend's address. Oh. You got any uh, more of these? Oh well, my friend has plenty of ideas. Good. Bring them in when they're ready. And uh, twenty-five dollars a piece. Oh. On publication. <laughs> Good day. Good day. Mr. March. With your coloring, Meg, it would be very becoming. Oh, but it must be expensive. It looks like China silk. Well, of course, if John can't afford it. Ned always loves me in blue. Maybe I'll buy it. Well, what makes you think we can't afford it? Uh, I simply meant it looks expensive, that's all. And you're quite right, it will become me. Done very well this month, Mag. See, once you put your mind to keeping the household expenses down, it's not as hard as you think. As a matter of fact, we've done so well, there's enough here for my new overcoat. What overcoat? I ordered one last week from the clothiers. My old one is pre war. In fact, it's so worn, uh, it practically has holes in it. John, uh. There's one expense I haven't entered yet. Something I bought this morning, and I just haven't had the time to. Of course not. This great meal you've prepared, you'll spoil me. Sally Moffat and I went window shopping this morning. Uh, well, it was supposed to be window shopping, but... Um, I bought some blue cloth for a new dress. China silk. Well, if I'm to have a new overcoat, you shall have a new dress. Fair is fair, Mrs. Brooke. 
Fifty dollars worth? Well. You ladies like a lot of lace and fur belows and uh, ribbons. Price of a dress adds up, I know. No, John. Fifty dollars was for the silk alone. You must have wanted the dress a great deal, Margaret, to spend so much money. My old coat will do fine for another year. Oh, John. Oh, no, no. Don't think anything more about it. from my younger sister Amy had started skimming back across the ocean from the day of her landing in Europe. Marmy forwarded them down to me in New York and I read them avidly but with a surprising lack of envy. For her Europe was far different from what I'd have made of it had I been the one chosen to accompany Great Aunt Carol. Amy March, you are prettier than all the pictures that we've seen. Oh well thank you sir. <laughs> you know I have a marvelous day plan now. I think what we'll be able to do is to go Mr. Lawrence! Mr. Lawrence! <laughs> well, here he is. Amy Marsh. <laughs> Miss Amy Marsh, I see. And very elegant indeed. Thank you. And without a chaperone? Aunt Carol's at the dressmaker. Oh. And even she says I no longer need a chaperone. <laughs> oh, we knew you were in Italy. We just didn't know where. Mm -hmm. Isn't Laurie with you? Of course, he's gone to Vienna to study his music at last, hasn't he? Well, he wrote us that you were willing for him, too. No, Laurie's in Florence, too. But uh, he's still in bed, I'm afraid. You see, though we are in the same city together, we occupy quite separate worlds, he and I. His lights up at night, gambling houses, cabarets because of Joe. Your sister mustn't be blamed. Well, perhaps not, Mr. Lawrence, but I think her very foolish. She could have a comfortable life with a man who adores her, and instead she chooses to be a governess. Well, not I. I don't believe, uh, you met Frank Vaughn when he was in Concord? In 64, I think it was. Mm. I've been seeing something of Frank since I've been here. I even visited his family's estate in England. Do you know, Mr. Lawrence, I do believe they're even richer than you. And if he should ask, I think I shall accept and be rich, too. <laughs> One shouldn't marry only for money, of course. But I think it's always wise to take that into account. <laughs> if any of your sisters were speaking in such a calculating manner, I'd write your dear mother to call her home at once. But you, my dear Amy, have a habit of following your heart and not your head. I don't think you've ever done anything in your entire life because it was wise. Amy. Uh, I have to go now, Mr. Mm. Lawrence. But Aunt Carol and I are leaving for Paris in only a few days. Please, ask Laurie to come and see us before he goes. Our rooms are at the Firenze. you two to go on out to the kitchen where I think your mother has baked you some gluten. Yes. Okay? But just one a piece. One.
Next summer we will get to the seashore. John? Hmm. Put your paper down, John. Since you were so generous with me about my blue silk dress, I'd like you to be the first to see it. All right. On with the show, then. All right, turn around, and no, no peeping. Mm. All right. But I... Sally Moffat was only too pleased to buy the silk from me. Black Knight, come to save merry old England. I am here. I am here in response to your message, fair damsel. Laurie, you're tiddly. Shame on you. I wanted you to come, but not like this. Ah, uh, luggage. You are leaving for Paris. If Aunt Carol found out you were here at this time oh, of the goodness. night... Don't be ridiculous. It's hardly after 12. Is it? Is it? Is it after 12? Hold it there. Oh, be good to me, Amy. You asked that of me once, and I was. It's because of Joe, isn't it? You... You said something else that day. You said... Something about... Talent. Genius. Have you discovered yet which is yours? Took three minutes at the National Museum and all those glorious paintings. And indeed, I found out. Only talent, Laurie, and a minor one at that. Does it make you miserable? Well, there are other things. Other ways to spend your days. To have a life as worthwhile as... Frank Vaughan? Perhaps. I remember that day very well, Theodore Lawrence. You said you may never have the chance to find out about your true genius. Well, you do have the chance. Your grandfather would be happy to send you to Vienna to, to compose or concertize on the piano or... I'm very disappointed in you, Lori. And she would be, too. Mark my words, you'll be disappointed in yourself someday. Oh, it's such a waste of you, Lori. Sweet Amy. <laughs> It, it doesn't seem to matter now. The, anyway, suppose... Suppose I discover, like you, only a little talent. Then you go on to something else. But you have to find out. Very well. If you're going to be a weakling, then be one. We're leaving very early for Paris in the morning, and I at least need my sleep, so please go. I'm sorry. I, I, I shouldn't have come. Not at this hour. I can't think why. I, I, it was a grave imposition. Please forgive me, Amy. I might try, Amy. I might. What are your plans? Paris till fall, then Nice for the winter. Nice? In the spring, perhaps, after Vienna? Oh, I'd like that, Laurie. I'd like that very much.
Professor? Professor Bear, I didn't mean to trespass. The door was open, and I was just bringing... You like Lear? Oh, the play, King Lear. Oh, yes, I... I didn't lose your place. You see, right here. I've read the comedies, and some of Shakespeare's tragedies, Romeo and Juliet, Hamlet, Richard II, but not this one, not yet. Well, that one is the best, I think. Well, I... Oh, Miss Mark. Mm hmm is, is they are not mine. Uh, yes, they are. Frau Kierke tells me what you do is that you mend these poor old clothes. You are too kind. And ever since, I think, how can I repay her? Repay? Oh, no, it's not necessary, oh, yes, Professor. yes, it's Truly. necessary. For me, it's necessary. For you, maybe not. But for me, I insist. But I have no money. <laughs> oh. oh, Professor, please. Ah, so, German. That is my money, no? I teach German to you. Oh, no, 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 I couldn't. No? Oh, uh... Of course, I'd like nothing more than to learn how to speak your excellent language, but you see, I'm a disaster at foreign sounds, all through school trying to learn French, no. But that is not German. And I was not the teacher. Das Rad ist auch ein sehr... Auch. Auch. Auch ein sehr... Nützliches... Nützlich. Nützlich. German. Nützlich. Nützliches Ding. Das ist ein Rad. Das sind Rade. Rede, Rede, Rede. I am a monster. And you try so hard. No, you are not a monster. I am a dumbhead. It's been three weeks, Professor, and I'm still hopeless. Yeah, you are hopeless. <sighs> at German, not at mending socks. Come. What we need is a walk in the park. And perhaps you will climb a tree for me. So little girls tell my nephews, they tell me. I was once... The fastest tree climber in all Heidelberg. But you mustn't tell them. So, hmm? come and see. I challenge you, Miss Marsh. I race you to the top. It's good, no? Oh, it's good, yes. get so cold. Numb, sort of. Well, of course, they're cold, Bethy. We've been careless and let the fire languish. This will warm us both up. Come sit over here with me. Achoo! Oh, Aunt Marge! You're just in time for tea. Huh. Well, so I am. I stopped on the way to pick up your mail. A letter from Josephine. I see it's been opened. Certainly. Well, you all show me all their letters anyhow, do you not, Margaret? Well, yes, Aunt March, but usually it's... I do <laughs> miss the girl. Full of her own opinions, though she's always been. I do think, Margaret, that given your financial straits, 
A little more economy with fuel is indicated. This house is like an oven. Perhaps it would not feel so at March if you were not quite so frugal with coal in your own house. Moderation in all things, Margaret. I practice the golden mean, even if others do not. Read Joe's letter, Marmy. You'll find it's full of that man she calls the, the professor. Uh, whatever did you do wrong in their upbringing, you and March, that so many of your girls have this predilection for tutors? Out loud, please, Marmy. Uh, dear Marmy, Papa, and my mouse, the package with your many little gifties arrived in good time for Christmas, and I thank you for all. The professor... The professor, poor as he is, managed somehow to afford Christmas roses for my room, so that altogether I felt much less lonely than I had feared I would on my very first Christmas ever away, away from, from home. home. The professor still hasn't received the faculty appointment he so longs for and needs, but he never lacks for a smile or a laugh. Come on, go. Wet in no time. And you and I will go and sit, huh? Yes. So, Miss March, how does it go with your writing? Hmm? It is such a fine thing to have a goal, work so hard to reach it, and to write well. That is near to the highest goal of all. Do you think so, too? Oh, yes. All my life, it's what I've wanted most. Oh, oh wait, 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 wait. Would you consider, I, I know it is a great deal to ask, but I would be honored to read some of your writings. No, it would be presumptuous. You a professor and me only a poor scribbler. Opa, garbage, Miss Joe, garbage. Now for the pigeons. Professor, huh? why do you disapprove of it, son? Hmm? The volcano. Hmm? Because it is garbage. Once I bought but once was enough. But the stories in the volcano are exciting, adventurous. They really aren't bad, you know, just silly, perhaps. No. There is nothing in them but violence between characters of no morality. And nothing is learned when it is done. I would suggest you see for yourself, but I would not waste your time. You are a writer. You know better than I to be good. Our writing must be about real people, real problems. Huh? Let you get cold sitting here, so Thomas. Come, come. We join the children. We have a snowball fight, huh? Dearest Jack. Oh, dearest 
Meg. Understand. Of course, you must go. But tomorrow is so soon. Yes, it is. I know. Well, but... As you wish, dear Joe. Oh, how the children and I will miss you, not to mention Professor Bear. Oh. Remember, if you ever want to come back, you'll always be welcomed in this house. Oh, how lovely. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Well. Oh. What's a maid brought for the bottom of the rabbit cage? Hmm? And most appropriate, too, was your name on it? Yes, but you see, it was Mark. the last story I invented. La you have written others of these trials? Well, after what you said in the park, I came right home. Such a fine young woman with such a good mind. Even if you can't learn German, you have no business lowering yourself to such obfall. Garbage! Miss Joe, garbage! And you, Professor, have no business offering an opinion at all. I never asked for one. <laughs> And if truth be told, I'm sure you haven't even read my story. A telegram from Joe. She's coming home tomorrow. Oh. She wants to come, Bethy. This is going to be a busy household getting ready for Meg's baby. Our first grandchild. Born in the very same bed all you girls were. It isn't fair, though. Joe's always the one to have to sacrifice and give up things. If I could just help you more, she wouldn't have to this time. You do help, Bethy. Every day, just by being your own sweet self. Frau Kierke tells me you leave today. She walks the children in the park herself this minute. Not to be sad for your going. Take your things. It's heavy. You were not going to say goodbye, even. Well, that's why I was there yesterday, outside your door, to tell you. Oh, yesterday was a stupidity. Mine, not yours. I read your story last night. It was not so bad as I thought. I mean, the writing has a promise. You can't expect me to deny everything I said. No, I don't. And you shouldn't. Why, that very night, after we talked, I burned them, you see. You burned them? You burned your stories? Yes, and resolved never to write any more like them ever again.
I will get a carriage to take you to the train. One's already been ordered. It should be here any minute. Will take your sister Bess to the ocean, as you hope. After Meg's baby comes, my older sister Meg. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel I know them all. Miss Joe. Just Joe, please. Just Joe. <laughs> I wish that I might write you if... Uh... Yes, and I will answer when... Perhaps might you come to Concord sometime for a visit? with hotels and things. With Meg and Amy gone, there's plenty of room. You can stay with us. Remember your stodgy old friend in New York. Have a good trip. Joe! 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 It is inscribed for you! Yes, Joe. Read Lear well, and it will help you much, because the study of character in this play will help you to read it in the world and to paint it with your pen. Friedrich. Friedrich. Nothing yet. John! John! It's a boy! Joe, how, how's, uh... Well, congratulations, John. <laughs> Thank you, sir. And I'm a grandfather. Yes, sir. <laughs> a boy. Yeah. Had to wait a long time to see one of those in this family. <laughs> oh, we, uh... We thought we would call him after you, you know, uh, uh, if it was a boy, I mean. Did you? Did you indeed? <laughs> well, I think this calls for a little libation. I certainly do. Uh, for medicinal purposes, of course. <laughs> but we, we men have been under a great strain, you know, uh, all the waiting and all of that concern. <laughs> uh, Joe didn't say anything about Meg, so... Joe? Uh, no. Meg's fine, John. Just fine. Isn't it wonderful news? Twins, John. You're the father of a new baby boy. And baby girl. I spoke more truth than I knew. Here, you need this. Oh. <laughs> Amy? It's twins! It's twins! A 
boy and a girlfriend. Hurrah! Then you, my darling Amy, are now two ants in one. Mm -hmm. Shall we celebrate? Your carriage awaits, mademoiselle, s'il vous plaît. In a minute. Just let me finish Mormy's letter. Is something wrong? It's Beth, my sister. Mormy says I shouldn't cut short our stay in Europe. Cut it short, Amy. You see, a couple years ago, Beth took the scarlet fever, and she never did come back from it well, and now it seems... Yes, but your mother writes that you needn't go home. No, I, I guess I needn't. Perhaps the thing to do is, is get Aunt Carol settled at Lake Lucerne and then decide. Will you follow me there, too? Amy, I don't want you to go back to America, ever. Everybody adores you at home, Amy. My parents, all of London, and I do, too. All of London doesn't even know me, Frank. Yes, but they will. I will make you the toast of the London season. Deck you out in jewels and satin and summers. Oh, summers, you'll rule the manor house in Windsor and outdo the queen herself. Oh, Amy, it could be all so fine. Amy, would you do me the honor of becoming my... Heavens! You dazzle me to bewilderment, Frank Vaughn. Ask me again at Lake Lucerne. Come along, our carriage is waiting, and so is our celebration. Bethy, what is it? Is it the babies? Oh, no, no, everything's fine, really. I must be having a touch of summer melancholy. Oh, did Meg send you out with these? Um, I don't think they need changing. No, they're all right. Well, you know Meg, always worrying. Anyhow, she and Marmy are having a good old gossip, and nothing bores me more. Mouse. Oh, Mouse, tell me what it is. What's wrong? We've always been special to each other, you and I. Able to talk. Sharing our secrets? It's nothing important, truly. Anyway, it'll all pass soon enough. I see I must cheer you up. And I know exactly how. I heard from Cape Cod. We can have a cottage at the very time I requested. It's not right on the beach, but really close. It'll make all the difference, Mouse. I know it will. It'll put the apples back in your cheeks. And now, with Meg back on her feet again, well, we can leave next week. In fact, I already sent the wire telling them so. That's wonderful, Joe, but spending all your hard-earned money this way for me, that isn't right. It's for me, too. We're going to have a fine rest, both of us. And you'll come home well. You'll see. <coughs> what is it? What is it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Kathy, can I get you anything? You're writing your professor, aren't you? Not mine. But yes, I am writing to him. I wish I could have met him. Oh, but you will. Well, he's coming to Concord for a visit soon. At least I hope he is. Well, he'll never come if you don't finish that letter, will he? I think maybe I'll have myself a little sleep. Sister's dying. You won't let her go. Thank you. 
chore to get the post, not yours. Bethy, it's too long a walk for you, and then to come all the way down to the beach. I knew it'd make you happy. Your professor wrote back. He's not mine. <laughs> come sit with me here while I read it. Better still, lay your head in my lap and rest a little. Yes, ma'am, Dr. Josephine, whatever you say. I read much between the lines. Perhaps I presume, but would it not be easier for you and your sister if you would talk together about the truths you try to hide from yourself? From what you write of Beth, I think she does not refuse to know that you do. Must make it doubly hard for her. Bad news, Joe. He writes. He writes of you. He understands how it is for me, then. I wish you could, Joe. You're getting better, Mouse. I, I won't have it otherwise. Joe, please. It would be such a relief to think that someone else besides me I've needed to talk with someone for so long about it. But I was afraid to say anything, to hurt you, to grieve you. You could be wrong. We can keep it from happening. You might as well try to stop the sea from running out with the tide. why you were crying over Meg's babies? I'll never watch them grow up, you see. Oh, Bethy. Joe, don't. It was hard for me, too, at first. But now... If you stop trying to fight the tide, we can be happy with every moment that's left before it runs out altogether. I will. I'll try. He's a bit like me, don't you think? All dressed up in Quaker feathers, never straying far from shore. Content in his world as I've been in mine. But the seagull is like you. <laughs> Wild and strong and happy when alone. <sighs> Meg is a turtle dove. <laughs> and Amy... Amy's a lark. Trying for the clouds, but always in the end dropping back down into her nest. I'll be sorry not to see Amy again. But you will. Amy will be coming home in the fall.
Would it make it easier if we closed up her room for a while? She asked me to accept it that day on the beach. To let her go. But how can I, Molly? I can't. Then write about her, Joe. It's always helped you before, your writing. Write about Beth and your love for her. She'd like that and be proud. Father, I should have been here when you heard, Amy. I can't tell you how I... Never mind. You're with me now. If only I could have seen her one more time. I know. I want you to tell me everything. Everything, Lori. About your winter in Vienna. About your music. I'll be staying. I'll take care of everything, sir. For a while, nothing seemed to come right. And then for a while, I thought... I thought the music I was writing was good. Maybe not brilliant, but good. And then finally, the day came when the truth dawned. And I tossed it all in the trash. Of all the off... That was a dreadful thing for you to do. You should have asked somebody else to decide. Someone better able to judge than you. I am a mediocre pianist and a worse composer. At least give me the credit for being a good critic. <laughs> Believe me, Amy, there is no genius. None at all. Before I go to my suite, I'd like to see Miss Amy March. She is staying here, is she not? Uh, yes, but she is not in her room at the moment. Uh, she and her friend may be out on the Grand Terrace, Mr. Vaughn. Uh, you may try there. I, I will see to your luggage. Hmm. Friend? I even wrote an opera. Very grand and utterly terrible. I... I had it half completed before I realized, and it was the oddest thing, Amy, or so it seemed to me then. But the heroine that I had visualized on stage, costumed gloriously singing my music, she didn't have brown hair. She was blonde. She was you, Amy.
Hey, see what's here. The note says they want more like this one. After so many tries, so many things having to be rewritten, this one wrote itself. I'm very proud of you, Josephine March. Meg, guess I'll what? Carriage on the porch, Mommy. The twins are in the shade. They'll be all right, don't you think? Yes, I think they will be. Honestly, Meg, the way you carry on, you'd think they were made of spun sugar. Now, don't you start, Joe. Anyway, what do you know about babies? You're not even married, Meg. much less. It's all right, Joe. I'm sorry. You're right, of course. I don't know much about either. Meg. I shouldn't have said it. I know I shouldn't. I've just been so tired lately. And John does say things like that. And he doesn't know any more about babies than Joe does. Would he like to, do you think? I'm their mother, Marmy. He's just... Just their father? Of course you're tired, darling. So why don't you let John share some of the burden with you and some of the joys? Driver, stop! Stop right here, please. I think you ought to be alone when you tell her. Without me. She thought once she'd lost a great friend in you. I don't want to see her hurt again. She's the one who turned me down, remember? Not the other way around. But all that time, and Beth gone too. She may have been thinking you'd always be there for her. Please. But you come back to me, you hear? You can count on it, Mrs. Lawrence. anyone know is your grandfather with you oh uh, well, no wait 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 just give me a chance please one we got home just this minute two we wanted to surprise you three yes grandfather is here he uh, he let us come ahead from the station and because uh well because uh that's that's announcement number four joe <laughs> what is it Lori? my wife is with me too You're married? Amy, Joe. I married our little Amy, only she's not just little Amy anymore. She's far from it. You were right, Joe. Another girl to shake the heart. Wonderful. Really, how very wonderful. You really mean that, don't you? Yes. But I will never forgive you, never, Theodore Lawrence, for not inviting me to the wedding. Ah, good old dependable Joe. Oh, thank the Lord you haven't changed. <laughs> Amy, where is Amy? Joe? Amy, Amy, oh, welcome home, and thank
thank you. You've brought my friend back to me. I worked hard at my writing all that autumn and did good work. Suddenly, much in demand by editors. But as Thanksgiving came and went, it seemed Laurie's prediction about me would prove true. I was fast becoming a lonely old spinster. My thoughts often strayed to New York and to Professor Bear. But I had given up hoping for a visit from him. Even his letters came less frequently. I told myself that since he still had not received the university appointment so precious to him, his pride was the cause. But underneath, my fear grew that for him, time and distance were waning our friendship. Well, she's practically a regular contributor in such a fine magazine. Please, you take it. Oh. I insist. Thank you, Mrs. Kierke. Thank you very much. to have a wood fire, don't you think, instead of that dirty old coal? Yes. I'll be in my study if you need me, dear. Mm, your turkey smells marvelous, Hannah. Gotta put a lot of sage in the dressings, the whole thing. Seems strange to celebrate on Christmas Eve, but Meg and John are so determined for the twins to have their first Christmas morning at home, <laughs> as if they were old enough to realize I should have come down to help you. Everything's it... ready, Joe. But there is one thing you can do. I know it's raining, but I heard the whistle from the station, so I know the train is in. Maybe your father's package has come from Boston. Would you mind going to see? Do me good to get out. Rain or not? 
God, I wish it would turn to snow. Christmas isn't Christmas unless it's snowing. Don't forget this. Okay. And don't go all absent-minded and forget to come home. I'll take the shortcut. Oh, Marmy. The tree looks beautiful. All of us together again, after so long. So many years. I know it's hard, Joe. Hard for everyone. But Beth will be here, too. In all our thoughts. Is, is this the house of the Reverend Marsh? Yes. Is Miss Josephine in? She's gone to the train station for a package. I have just come from there. How could I to miss her? She went the back way. Perhaps I will. You must her. be that professor of hers. You are not happy for me. No, I mean, yes, I am. Truly. Only, uh... Oh. Uh, when will you be leaving? In a week. They won't be there after the turn of the year. Oh, Joe, it is a college of much respect. The famous Horace man was president there. It's so far away. You cry for lack of you. It's the rain. It will only be for a year. And then... You will be here, still here. Of course. Where else would I be? Good. They're good. So you can come for a visit again? They do not pay me a great deal at Antioch. But if I am frugal, and I will be, oh, I will be, then in a year, I will have enough to take a wife. Oh, so that's why you've come to Concord. To tell me that you're getting married next year. No, no, no. Do it all wrong. In the train, I rehearse, and I rehearse. But you do not say what I expect, so it is all a waste. Yes, Miss Josephine Marsh, I will take a wife next year, if you will have me. 
Baby, my little love, will you have me? I, I know it is a long time to wait, and uh, I know this. I will never be a, a man of great means. I have nothing to give you but a full heart and uh, empty hands. But your hands aren't empty. They hold my full heart in them. Thanks be to God. you to the altar, but a whole year. I'm very practiced at being frugal. I am used to no, it. No, this cannot be. A man must take his bride to a home. I must for you. No. The decision is mine. I will take care of you as I see fit. Yes, Friedrich. Oh, my goodness. Everyone is there, at home, right this minute. They'll all get to meet you at once. All at once? Are you sure I can't fill a glass for you, sir? Oh, not for me. Don't Thank you, you dare. Uh, Emerson does not provide <laughs> the total religious much. experience, you see. Mm. Many of us still need the intermediation of a minister. So. Of course, <laughs> Hope so. Hope so. No. Oh, no, thank you, Lord. Uh, Once enough for me, as you should mm -hmm. quite well remember. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah's going to be very upset with oh, Joe. So the dinner has to keep. But my face... <laughs> what, did I do? what did I do wrong? It's all right, it's all right. No, John. Uh, I'll get it. All he wants is his father. In my day, it was the mother's duty to see to the children. No good can come of allowing the father to interfere with woman's work. As I was saying, the Tuileries are beautiful, but I think the loveliest place of all was the Grand Terrace, at Lake Lucerne. Mm. Mm. Miss March? Oh, I think well, perhaps just a little touch. Merry Christmas, Aunt March. Oh, Merry Christmas, sorry. Everyone, look! Look what I got for Christmas. This is Frederick, my professor. We're going to be married. Oh, oh, you're you're welcome. Welcome. This is Marnie and, and Aunt Marge. Oh, I'm so happy. Guess what? It's snowing on the Dinner is on, so come and get it before it goes off tacky. Hannah, Professor Bear will be joining us. I've already said another place. I figured he'd be coming back. Margaret. Two tutors in the family. Oh, come, 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 come. It's the thank heaven I'm around to see to your proper upbringing. Mr. Lawrence, wait for me. Don't worry, darling. She said the same thing about all of you when you were babies. And look what fine little women you've turned out to be. 